This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my stupendous, awesome, legendary supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Shadowversity on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash Shadowversity. Let's talk about shields, baby. Let's talk about... No, no, it's not working. It's not working. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to share with you some of the coolest and iconic shields that were used throughout history. Now, I've covered shields on this channel already, but that was quite a long time ago. I can do a bit of a better job now, and those videos were more of a deeper dive. I want to do a more general overview, so for you guys who are new to my channel and, you know, perhaps haven't seen those videos or don't have time for a longer one, we can just cover them, you know, briefly here. And there's some interesting things that are kind of funny about shield terms and stuff that I also want to share with you that I haven't talked about before. So to kick us off, I want to tell you what these shields were called historically because we need d proper designations to find shields from the other so to kick us off this you know shield that you see right here okay historically that shield was called a shield more often than not yeah just a shield oh but what about other shields so, so what about this one uh, above me right here okay well historically that shield was also called a shield yeah and, and that one there yeah, most likely shield as well. I mean, in their own respective languages, just, just shield, that's kind of it. Because the interesting thing is, if you don't have a, a need to specify one type of shield over another, and generally people would only own one shield, I don't think they would have a collection of many different types, perhaps some did, but more often than not, you have one shield, it's there, it's good to be used, and when you need to grab it, it's like, hey honey, can you grab my shield, or this is my shield? There's no need for a specific designation. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, later on, when it, different types of shields became more prominent in, this, in the one time period, that different names uh, came about. And so in those instances, they do have more historical you know, names or designations, such as the buckler. This is a historical name for a historical type of shield because the buckler was around when other shields existed and so you just wouldn't call this a shield. That would kind of be a, bit, a, little, you know, a little confusing. And th this term, buckler, has actually crept into some other terms and stuff like that because Here's an interesting tidbit. Buckler and sword was a very popular kind of combination for the regular person. Long swords? Uh, generally, I mean, uh, this changes in geographical location, also time period, because larger, you know, two-handed style swords, long swords, became popular even by common folk in the latter periods of the medieval period around Germany and stuff, or, you know, you could even look at, say, they were Kriegs messes, but also just long swords. Depending on time period and location, different social groups use them. But anyway, uh, around the time sword and buckler was more prominent, which is what, the, about 13th to 14th century, okay? Regular people generally liked it. And so anyway, the buckle was mainly developed because it was easy to carry around for personal defense. Carrying around one of these big sucker shields, a bit harder to carry with you whenever you walk around. But you know, sword, you got your sword at your belt and you can just slip the buckler over the top of, you know, the pummel right there. And there we go, you got your whole combo and you're perfectly equipped. So this would kind of rattle around by these swaggering, you know, uh, commoners and swordsmen going around. Uh, and a term came about to uh, identify these, these kind of swaggering swordsmen and stuff. And it was called swashbucklers. Why? Because it's swishing around and it's a buckler, swash, swashbuckler. So there we go. Yes, real historical term, buckler. And we can understand why it had a different term because other shields exist in the same time period and you needed a name to define the difference. Okay, but what about some of the other names, because for these two shields, eh, which, which you might already know, but uh, kite shield and heater shield, is that what these sort, you know, shields are called historically? Pro most likely not, okay? Especially the kite shield. Did kites exist in the medieval period? Okay. Uh, now the kite shield did exist in the same time in which round shields were popular. Uh, what were they called? Well, probably maybe a teardrop shield, a pear shield, or maybe just a, lo a longer shield. It's a, it's a long shield, a pointy shield, or whatever. whatever. There's any number of ways. And maybe no term was used enough to become a generalized term for, uh, for you know, a large populace or geographical location in history because most often than not, people just used a descriptive term to define the difference than an official, this is what these shields are named because they most likely changed. Even if a certain name caught on in one community, most likely it had a different name in another community. And when someone walks over, it's like, oh, this is my, you know, like referring to the Kai shield. That's my pointy shield. Oh really? Oh, we call that a teardrop shield. Oh, whatever, well, now we know it's a shield. 
Yeah, it is a shield. Okay, good. And the kite shield is an excellent infantry shield. This is not just a shield that was used on horseback. In fact, in my own opinion, it functions better on foot than on horseback, okay? The other thing about the kite shield, it has the most, you know, uh, variety and configuration of handholds or straps. People say, hang on, that's a, this isn't just a center grip, this is a horizontal center grip. But guess what? Well, this is artwork, okay, showing kite shields being held just like this, horizontal, and I, I love this uh, configuration because it honestly gives the most versatility when on foot, okay? You know, you can do the full warding, opening and closing, you get your defense, you can hold it down like this, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cool, okay? I love horizontal, you know, cinder grip, kite shields. And I, I love this shield, this, this, this is my favorite. I, I love kite shields, I love my kite shield. It's big. Can you even see me? <laughs> look at the defenses on this thing. Heater shield is an interesting one. Why on earth is it called a heater shield? It doesn't look like a heater. Well, does it? I, well, well, yeah. Uh, again, this is a, a later period name designated to, you know, a good old heater shield. And uh, why? Well, it's the same shape, shape as a heating iron. So back in the day when you ironed your clothes, you had a big lump of iron or whatever, it would heat up on your stove and then you could iron your clothes. And it was the same shape as a heater shield. And it was a heating iron, and so there we go, heater shield. Was it called that historically? Like I said, nah. But these are the terms that we have in the modern day. The round shield, another interesting kind of uh, topic because we generally just call it by, by, by describing it. It's a round shield. A lot of people also call it a Viking shield, but this shield was used by a lot of people other than the Vikings. And Viking generally refers to a profession than an actual group of people depending on how you look at how language evolves, because now it kind of has evolved to people just use, uh, defining a group of people instead of, eh, oh, that's a whole other topic for another video. But was that called <laughs> Viking Shield? No, no. In Old Norse, the word shield is skjolder, and so you could call it a skjolder, uh, but the Romans also had a name for their round shields, which are basically identical, and that was the parama. So parma. The other iconic historical round shields that we must mention is the aspis of classic antiquity, the rotella, and of course, the taj. The aspis, also referred to as the hoplon, is a fairly large domed shield. One of the differences between the aspis and, say, the round Viking period shields is that the aspis was strapped to the arm off-center, meaning that the forearm would rest on one side of the shield itself, so the other side would protrude further past the person holding it to protect the next soldier who would be standing in a formation, so the aspis very much is a formation shield shield meant to be used in large armies, not necessarily optimized for single combat. The positioning of the straps also meant that the top kind of lip of the dome could rest on the soldier's shoulder. The Rotella is a more medium sized shield, very similar in size to the heater shield except round, and it is strapped to the arm. The Taj is similar to the Rotella except that it is not domed. It is a flat shield, but it is also strapped to the arm. And generally it's a little bit smaller than the Rotella. Interestingly enough, the word Taj was actually a general word for shield in Old English, and so many of the other shields of the early medieval period would have been called Taj. And when people set up round things to shoot at because they looked very shield-like, they were also called Taj, which actually came to be spoken as target, something to be shot at. So even though the word Taj historically was used to refer to many different types of shield, as the old English word for shield, as I mentioned, nowadays it refers to a very specific type of shield, which is a medium to small round flat shield that is strapped to the arm. There's another very classic shield that we don't see here, which is famous. What shield is that? Well, it's the classic Roman scutum. Great for being used in formations. It is incorrectly called a tower shield. But again, a tower shield is a, bit, a descriptive term. It's kind of come about in the modern day. And you could almost, you know, consider the word tower shield as a name for a family of shields that scutum is a part of. Because there are other shields that are the same kind of shape and size as the scutum with some differences. For instance, there is the pavese. It's spelled pavis, but you know, a good Italian friend told me once that it's pronounced pavese. I hope I'm doing it right, Metatron. Sorry if I've offended you. Now the Pavese were Pavis Pavese. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation already, so I just should I just call it Pavis or Pavet? I'll do my best, okay? I'm trying. Pavese, Pavese, Pavese. I want you to go to the store and get me a Pavese. And the kitten. I wanna eat it. The Pavese was very popular amongst 
crossbowmen, okay? Why? Well, it has kind of a gutter on it, this kind of section that's kicked up a bit, which enables you to rest it on the ground easier. And so when you've got your crossbow, you can rest it on the ground, reload, fire. It's basically portable cover, real. Well, that's what a big shield is generally. And of course, even with these general categories or designations that I'm talking about, they varied within those categories, okay? They varied in size, they varied in overall shape. There are, there are kite shields that are the size of a person, and then there are other ones that are much smaller than mine, and they cover maybe the knee to the shoulder. And it would still be called a, you know, kite shield. And then, of course, the heater shields, they uh, have a lot of variety in and of themselves. It fell. What am I to do? My shields are falling down. It caught the wind. <laughs> well, it is, it is called a kite shield. The other thing that I'll talk about, and others have done deeper dives on this subject, Scarlagrim have, even I have, uh, specifically when I'm talking, doing my deeper dive on heater shields, is the difference between center gripped and strapped on. And there's a lot of pros and cons to it. I won't go into all the detail here, but I'll, do, I'll share one of the main reasons why uh, strapped on is advantageous uh, over center grip. And uh, none of the main ones, Riding on a horse. Having a shield strapped on, whether it's like, you know, metal kind of handles that I have here on my heater shield, or leather straps and stuff like that, the fist is much closer to the edge of the shield, which makes it a lot easier to hold the reins of a horse. I have a whole video talking about shield use on horseback, and I even have a you know, funny prop he shall always be remembered. So if you want the full deep dive on that subject, please do check out that video. But general overview, one of the main kind of uh, advent advantages over disadvantages is yeah, strapped on, much easier to hold the reins of a horse, much more difficult doing that with a big round shield. Is it impossible? No, it'd be difficult. And then of course you have the fact that strapped on ones are more secure to the arm, harder to disarm, you can brace yourself against attacks, but center grip me gives you a lot more versatility in combat and so on and so forth. Now, have I missed some historical shields? Most definitely. There's actually a wide variety of shields used throughout history. These are the more iconic classical ones that I want to share with you. And some of the more important or interesting, you know, factoids information about these shields. If you want to know more about these shields individually, okay, their pros and cons in regards to combat, how you would want to use them. Well, I have individual videos dedicated to those subjects, so please do go check them out if you're interested. I hope to see you there, and until that time, farewell. Well.